Okay, my name is Carl Brolin with Shoreline Products. What we have here is our four, uh, number four gag tooling tool post. It holds four 3 8 diameter tools. And what I'm going to go over is how to put the spacer block under the headstock and how to indicate in your pocket. The distance between pockets is one and a half inches, so once you get one pocket indicated in, it's easy to figure out your spacing to the other three pockets. Okay. Uh, for starch, you take off your headstock. Okay. What you get with your spacer block is a different pivot pin, the spacer block itself, and another headstock key. Okay. This spacer block, when you put it on here, is set so that your headstock height uh, is on center line with your tool post. It's important to note that once you have this on here, your headstock is no longer the same height as your tailstock. So you cannot do tailstock jobs with this. It's set up for primarily and specifically to use your lathe as a chucker lathe, a multi-tool gang tooling lathe. Okay? So uh, the headstock is off. In order to change out the pivot pin, what you must do is flip this over, take out the two 1032 screws that are on the bottom holding the bed to the base. Okay, the one on the headstock side has one small washer, the one on the tailstock side has two larger washers. Just set them down on the same side I took them out of so I can't confuse the issue. All right, then what I'm going to do is flip it back over, hold it together, flip it back over. Okay, the next thing we have to do is remove the screw on top that holds the lead screw support at this end. And we're just going to take this out. degree pan head screw. Okay, if I take the entire base off right now, you'll notice that it's got a cut out on the lead screw support. What I'm going to do is pull out the lead screw support, take the pivot pin out of here, put the new pivot pin in, okay, put the lead screw support back in with the cut out facing down. Okay, it's all the way in. I put it back on the base so I have a nice surface to, to mount it onto, and I line up the threaded hole for the countersunk hole for this, for this screw. Okay, these nugs should, these, I'm sorry, these screws should be snug, not overly tight. Good and snug is good. Okay, I'm going to hold it together like this again and flip it over again. Okay, if you push it all the way up against the thrust collar at this end, both the holes at this end and this end should line up. Okay, so we'll put in this hole first, this screw into this hole first. Okay, and again, it's only a few turns on this one and just snug is all you need. Okay, and this guy here, goes several turns. Oops, several turns on this one. Okay, get it started again. And again, it's just snug. There we go. Okay, put this guy back over. Okay, now, on your headstock riser block, on one side, the keyway is cut almost all the way from one end through to the other. On the other side, the keyway is only cut about two-thirds of the way down. The side that's cut two-thirds of the way down is the side that goes down. So what you do is you put your keyway in here, and the keyway has two sides that are ground and two sides that are not. The ground sides are the ones that go in either side of the, the keyway that's cut into here. The unground sides are facing up and down. Okay, what you then do is hold it like so, put it over the pivot pin, Okay, and 
line it up. We're good right there. If it's down the way it should be, if the position is proper, there won't be any gap between the bottom of the spacer block and the top ground surface of the bed. There will always be a gap at the middle of the bed extrusion. For the headstock, remove the headstock key, put the headstock key into the slot on the top, push it forward as far as it will go, wipe off the bottom of the headstock, line up the headstock key, and again, there should not be any gap between the headstock and the spacer on the outside corners. I'm going to lock my headstock into position. Okay, good and tight. Okay, I left a chuck on this headstock because everybody who owns one of our lathes has a chuck that comes with the lathe. What I'm going to use to indicate my part in, this is a test indicator. This particular indicator is a half thou. Each line is a half thou. Okay, it's got a quarter inch uh, dovetail shank on it. Um, you can either use a chuck, you can use a quarter inch mill collet, you can use a quarter inch WW collet. The chuck is quick and easy and everybody's got one. Okay, just tighten this down snug on my indicator. Just, that's all it takes. All right, and now my indicator is set up spinning good. Okay, what I'm going to do now is indicate in one of the holes. It's usually wise to indicate them either end and then your distance between again is one and a half inch centers. So we'll move the table over here to the first one. Okay, and what I'm going to do is move the point of my indicator so it's larger than the hole. Then the z-axis, I'm going to bring it in. So it's close to the front of the hole, like so. Now I'm going to spin the indicator tip to see which way the hole's off. Right now, the distance from the side of the hole to the indicator tip is pretty close there and pretty far away here. So I'm just going to move my table over. And this gets me in the ballpark. Okay, up and down look pretty good. Let's see about like so. And I'm going to move it away again, and I'm going to make the indicator a little smaller radius that it's going to swing so it's closer to the size of the hole. All right. And this guy here now gives me a much clearer look at how close I really am. And I'm going to say it needs to move out like so. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to move it out. And so, so it reads, bring it in, oh, not enough. Right now I'm going to start spinning it and as you can see it's not moving at all which means I must have gotten lucky and gotten this perfect the first try or maybe not. Okay. If it's perfect the first try, it generally means your indicator is maxed out, not that you're perfectly on center. So move the tip of your indicator a little bit more. Okay, now you can see the indicator is actually changing. It's not maxed out anymore. Make sure your indicator is actually reading something and it's not maxed out. Okay, right now on the bottom it's measuring out at uh, five, six, seven, eight and a half on the bottom. And I'm about almost 15 here, so I'm going to move it so it's closer to the eight and a half. Okay, by reading here, I've got my, my mirror. I am on the other side of 10 here. 10 there, 10 there. down here to see what my height of low is. Okay, this mirror is pretty bad. So for this generation that has phones, we'll use a cell phone instead of a mirror. Get it set up for selfie. All right, and I can see exactly what my indicator is reading here. So 
so we're at 11 and a half there and we're at seven and a half here which means we're basically two thousandths off center line this way okay this way here again I am at 10 right there and I'm at 11 here I move it halfway just move my hand real so we're at 10 okay 10 and 10 both sides of it okay I've got this guy indicated in right now I'm reading 10 on this side and I'm reading 10 on this side okay so that's right there where it should be I'm going to move it out of the way okay I zero my hand wheel out and I'm going to move over an inch and a half okay bring it into the next hole okay, and I've got 10 on this side and I've got 10 on that side. So the spacing between holes is an inch and a half. Once you find the first one, it's an inch and a half increments for the next two. Okay. All right, the next thing, right now on these holes, if I'm going in here, the guy's measuring about one and a half thousandths above, well, it's measuring seven and a half, and this guy right here is measuring 11 and a half, okay. I'll say 12. So basically what that means is that the center line from my headstock to this tool post right now is off center by two thousandths. All right. If the headstock was lower than the than the tool post, then what we would do is just take the headstock off and put a piece of two thousand shim stock. Put a piece of two thousand shim stock right here on this machine surface and on this machine surface. Put this guy back on. Lock it down and you're dead on center line. In this case, the headstock is actually higher than the tool post. What we would do is loosen these guys here. off and put a piece of 2,000 shim stock under both sides of it here. Put it back on. Okay. And your center line to center line will be dead on. And then you just have to indicate your side to side in again. Okay, to explain the difference, the variation here, each of these parts, the thickness on the lay saddle, the thickness on the mill table, the distance from the bottom to the center line of this are all plus or minus one thousandths tolerance. Uh, if you stack up your tolerance, that's one, two, three thousandths. So these could be uh, also your tolerance on the headstock riser thickness and on your distance from the bottom of the headstock to center line are also both plus or minus one. You could have an absolute worst case scenario. You might be off center in your height by five. Uh, or you might be dead on. It depends on how your stack tolerances are. So if you want to have your machine deadly, you are going to have to see how much you're off on your height. Uh, thank you very much.